Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Mitchell. And I'm Juan Fernandez. Lena Wynn is off today. It's a big scare for actor Corey Feldman. He claims that somebody tried to kill him, and he even posted photos of himself in the ER. KCAL 9's Amy Johnson is live in Tarzana, where Feldman says the attack happened. Amy? Well, Juan and Sandy, there are still a lot of questions about what did or didn't happen at this intersection last night. The child star says it was a knife attack. But investigators say he had no cuts, and this might have actually been a case of road rage. Actor Corey Feldman took to Twitter last night posting these pictures and tweeted he'd been attacked at the intersection of Reseda and Ventura Boulevards Tuesday night by someone who was trying to kill him. The 46-year-old tweeted, I'm in the hospital. I was attacked tonight. A man opened my car door and stabbed me with something. Please say prayers for us. Thank God it was only myself and my security in the car when three men approached. While security was distracted with a guy, a car pulled up and attacked. I'm okay. I think that's crazy. I never thought anything would happen like that. We visited area businesses and couldn't find anyone who heard or saw any commotion. People at one business looked through security camera video but couldn't find the right time of the alleged attack. I'm not that surprised that weird stuff like that has happened around here because it's pretty common. Um, we have a lot of theft and robberies in Tarzana. Sonia Hugh lives just around the corner from the intersection. It happened at night, so a lot of the theft and robberies do happen around here at night. And so. Um, could possibly be true. Feldman later tweeted, LAPD are currently investigating the case as an attempted homicide. I have had mounting threats on all social media platforms by this vile wolf pack, and this, I'm sure, is a result of those negative actions. I have reason to believe it's all connected. Enough is enough. How sick are these people? Feldman has made allegations that he was sexually molested as a child actor and says he's been threatened because of it. Late last year, he started a GoFundMe page to raise money to increase his security. That page resurfaced again today. I just hope he's okay. Now, Feldman told investigators that they thought they were being followed last night, and so his security guard shined a flashlight at that car, and that may have prompted the encounter. So for now, they are investigating this, as I said, as a possible uh, road rage incident. I'll send it back to you. All right. Amy, thanks for the update. We've got breaking news from Washington, D.C. It's another shakeup at the White House. President Trump has fired the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and he's already named a replacement. David Shulkin was under fire after an ethics investigation found that he and his staff violated rules last year. And then just a few weeks ago, President Trump praised him, said he was doing a great job improving the Veterans Administration. But today, the president tweeted that he is thankful for Shulkin's service to the country and to veterans. But he also said he intends to nominate White House Director Admiral Ronnie Jackson for the job. Dr. Jackson was the doctor who recently gave the president a physical and declared he is in excellent health. Dr. Jackson also served President George W. Bush and President Obama. The body found in a shallow grave in Northern California has been positively identified as an aspiring actress from Los Angeles. 25-year-old Adia Shabani disappeared from Hollywood last month, mm -hmm. and KKNI's Jasmine Vio went to Shabani's neighborhood, where some people are having a really hard time dealing with this loss. How young she was, she came to L.A. to pursue her dreams. Uh, it's such a sad story to end up like this. Tyler Neal is one of Adea Shabani's neighbors who took a moment to stop by the flowers and candles left for her outside the Hollywood apartment building where she lived. It was an emotional night for her friends when news broke that LAPD detectives found her body in a remote wildlife area northeast of Sacramento. The 25-year-old aspiring actress and model was reported missing late last month. I remember seeing her outside. I live right next, right in the next building over. And, um, and then I saw signs out for a uh, missing person. Detectives released this elevator security video in Shabani's apartment that shows her leaving with her boyfriend Christopher Spots on a road trip to Northern California to see his dad February 23rd. One of her next door neighbors told me that he heard the couple arguing very loudly just a few days before they left on that trip and that Shabani mentioned feeling betrayed. 
Detectives say Spots told them they got into an argument during that trip and he dropped her off in Santa Clarita. But investigators believe he instead killed and buried her a day later where her suspected remains were found. Last week, Spots shot and killed himself at the end of a police chase in Riverside County. I couldn't understand how Chris is involved in this. Brian Riggle went to acting school with Spots and Shabani but did not know they were in a relationship. He said Spots had another girlfriend who detectives are now questioning as his fiance. We've had so many great conversations and he's one of the most positive, nice guys that, you know, I've ever known. In Hollywood, Jasmine Veal, KCAL 9 News. San Francisco police are looking for the driver of a car who plowed into five pedestrians. One of the victims died. Three others suffered life-threatening injuries. It happened late this morning in the city's Dog Patch neighborhood. Witnesses tell police that the driver got into an altercation with the five people, then drove onto the sidewalk at a high rate of speed and then ran them over. The driver then took off. A violent end to a police pursuit in Irvine. When the driver tried to run away, police shot him. The driver crashed on the 405 at Jamboree Road. Now he's in critical condition after he was shot at Von Carmen Avenue in Quartz. KCAL 9's Candace Crone is in Irvine with the investigation. Irvine police just identified the man shot as 24-year-old Kenneth Yamashita Magaro of Orange County. He's wanted on drug-related crimes and is on probation. Now, we did learn that police did not find a weapon at the scene. Let's take a look at some video from the shooting. You can see paramedics loading the suspect onto an ambulance after he was shot by police. Well, this afternoon, he is in critical condition. Now, this all happened around 10 o'clock last night. Anaheim police helicopter noticed a Nissan Altima on the 405 driving at a very high high rate of speed, upwards of 100 miles an hour. Police say Magaro crashed near Jamboree before officers could get there. He then took off running. Well, police found him near Von Carmen and Quartz, and that's where Anaheim police shot Magaro. Now, we don't know why or what led up to the shooting. Irvine police is investigating. We just spoke to their PIO, who shared why she couldn't give us many details. There's an ongoing investigation, so this is very early in the process. It's just happened last night. So any investigation that's taking place by the district attorney or by the Irvine PD, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, there are interviews still to be conducted, so that's where we're at right now. Again, no weapons were found at the scene. The Orange County District Attorney's Office is also looking into the shooting. They told me their investigation could take weeks, if not months. Reporting from Irvine, Candace Crone, KCAL 9 News. Some new developments today in the Stormy Daniels controversy. Daniels' lawyer now has filed a motion in court here in L.A. He wants to force President Trump to answer questions about hush money paid to Daniels. Stormy Daniels' lawyer is trying to force President Trump to answer questions under oath. We want to know the truth about what the president knew, when he knew it, and what he did about it. Just a few hours after he filed a motion, Daniel's attorney was on CBS this morning. He wants a deposition of Mr. Trump. Oh, man. Better call Geico. That payment was made 11 days before the presidential election. When we get to the bottom of this, we're going to prove to the American people that they have been told a bucket of lies. Daniels claims she and Mr. Trump had a one-time sexual encounter back in 2006. And you had sex with him? Yes. In the motion, her attorney claims Cohen's payment to silence Daniels was made to help ensure Mr. Trump won the 2016 presidential election. And he says that would violate the Federal Election Campaign Act. If you give an in-kind contribution, that has to be reported. None of this has been reported anywhere. Mr. Trump's lawyer has denied the hush money was related to the election, and the White House says there was no affair. A hearing is set for April 30th. Well, tomorrow is opening day at Dodger Stadium, and the preparations this time involve a little something extra after a broken pipe sent a flood of sewage onto part of the field last night. Yeah, it was a real yeah. mess. KCAL 9's Craig Herrera is out there live at the stadium. Crews are trying to make sure everything's ready for tomorrow, Craig. San Diego 1, yeah, the crews have been at it all day. They were out here last night. They've been here today as well, and the fans are coming in as well. They're trying to pick up their tickets for tomorrow's sold-out game or for games in the future. A lot of these fans tell us they are excited despite what they saw on TV last night. Go Dodgers, Go Dodgers. man. Go Dodgers. All day. Dodgers fever is in the air. 
A lot of fans were watching the freeway series against the Angels last night when a pipe burst, making a mess near the third base line. I thought, this is Dodger Stadium? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really unusual. The game was called in the fifth inning because stadium crews couldn't stop the leak. Our chopper was over the stadium today as work was being done on the line. I was looking right now. It looks like they're cleaning it up, so hopefully it, it better be open. <laughs> Judy Phillips uh, is hoping to get a ticket. Yeah, I guess I can be described as a diehard uh, Dodger fan. Today she picked up a few pins and patches. She's been collecting Dodgers memorabilia for over 30 years and now has more than 6,000 items, some going back to the Brooklyn days. Her thoughts on the upcoming season? It's a strong team. And after losing the World Series in Game 7 last season? They were so close. They, I, I, it was, you could taste it. Fans are ready for this year. We try to do opening day every year, but now it's special because we have him to bring, to come with us. Their six-month-old son will be in the stands with them. He's going to wear this tomorrow for opening day. His middle name is Chase, as in Utley. Hopefully he has quick and nice hands like Chase Utley does, but more the heart, the baseball heart for, uh, the heart that he has for baseball. That's one thing Dodger fans have, heart. All right, and you're looking live at uh, left field top deck out here. I just uh, confirmed Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. They tell me this was indeed sewage. The leak was found in the Dodger Stadium wastewater pipeline. Crews have been out here clearing up and sanitizing, getting the uh, everything ready for tomorrow. They'll be back tomorrow morning to make sure everything is a go. The Dodgers also tell me that they assure me that they are expecting everything to be a go for tomorrow's home opener against the San Francisco Giants. First pitch, 4:10 p.m. Back to you. Let's oh, sure hope so. Good. The start of a new season, yeah, right? Good rivalry for All opening right. day, too. Craig, thanks. Craig, thanks. Now to breaking news in downtown Los Angeles. A fire truck crash. Uh, this is downtown LA, and Stu Mandel's over. It looks like a car involved, too. Stu? Mm -hmm. Well, that's right, Sandra. Now, that fire truck was actually parked. We're hearing that two people inside that car were taken to a local hospital happening in the downtown Los Angeles area. It's going to be on 7th Street right at San Pedro. You can see an investigation now starting to start off out here. They're going to have both lanes shut down for just about a block out here on 7th Street, San Julian to San Pedro. No firefighters were hurt in this accident. And again, that fire truck was actually parked when that civilian vehicle crashed into oh. it. Live in Sky 9 over downtown Los Angeles. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. All right, Stu, thanks for that. Amazon.com took a big hit on Wall Street today, and it's all because of something President Trump reportedly said. Coming up, what's behind Amazon's $50 billion drop in market value? Also, Facebook just announced some new ways for users to protect their data. We're going to show you how to use them. And why you may want to think twice about tossing out those envelopes with the coupons you get in the mail. It's one company's new plan to get you to open it up and look inside. Amber? And a live look outside. This is our Santa Monica camera. Not a lot of clouds at all. Lots of sunshine. I'll tell you how long this warming trend is going to stick around.